What's that big yellow thing that looks like a McCulloch? It's made in Sweden. It can't be a Mac. Stay tuned. We'll all find out. Yeah, so if you thought this was a McCulloch, you'd be just as mistaken as I was. As uh, you look a little closer, it's a little faded, but she does have the partner logo there. And you look just under the recoil. See this bugger of focus? Here we go. Made in Sweden. And this is an original partner. This is before they uh, they uh, started to coexist with uh, Pioneer and then got bu eventually bought out by Electrolux. Um, so this is actually from the uh, 60s, I think 1964. Uh, they're based off of the partner R12. They call this the K12, I believe. Uh, and later on, they actually made a firefighting model uh, of this saw, which was a smaller CC and, and a much very different design, very close to the uh, the uh, Husqvarna Quick Cuts. And uh, this here uh, is a 90cc beast. <laughs> And the uh, the old fella there that I got from, he's a very good old boy, and he told me that she ran, so I trust him. Uh, and uh, I already went ahead and filled her up with fuel, so uh, let's uh, let's see if she'll go for us here. Okay. I gave her a quick prime too, so hopefully she'll just go. up I noticed it was moving but uh how big in uh in uh in uh you know metal that is it's surprisingly once it's running and you get the oscillating movement on that blade it's not that awkward and not that heavy I'm shocked it's that's actually a pretty comfortable saw huh. well anyways let's get that piece welded up to the trailer okay so I've decided I'm gonna put uh, my license plate out here and uh, that should be just fine because it's a fairly narrow trailer and that's not sticking out but two inches um, so any professional professional welders out there um, I, I may not uh, I may not be a professional but this is going to work for what I what I'm doing I'm just using an arc welder so that's what I've got and, um, and for uh, all you 
new welders out there, just make sure when you're doing your welding, you want to uh, clean up your spot where you're going to clamp your ground. So I'm going to put mine here. to be welding here. Quite as much to make the arc, you know. I'll clean up the piece of welding. Okay, I changed my ground to a uh, more gooder piece of metal. Let me attack it here first. Hope this works. top well, I'm going to do a little bit more and I'm going to change the rod and I'm going to try and come up a little bit underneath and then we'll tack it to the fender. Oh yeah I guess it helps if I turn it on. All right, sure there's nothing. underneath here. Maybe a little bit more sturdyized. Sturdyized. Tacked up here. A little bit trickier spot. Pretty tight in there. Very neat tight. And it's also kind of rusty. I could have cleaned it up better. That's why you're supposed to do a bang up job with your cleanup before you weld. That spot went well, but. Like I said, I'm not a professional. This is just going to do for what I need. good enough anyways I just didn't mind prettying it up but whatever Use this last little bit up here Okay. I mean, 
she's not pretty. Like I said, I'm not a farmer, or I'm a, <laughs> I am a farmer, um, but I am not a welder. So, get some water on that. Seems pretty sturdy. I don't think it's going anywhere. My hammer. Give her a little whack to knock the slag off. The thing about uh, anytime you guys are arc welding, um, I actually have an actual slag hammer in the shop. Um, but arc welds tend to leave this carbon. All right, so I'm happy with that. They're nice, beefy welds. I mean, they're not pretty, but I mean, arc welders are, in, are inherently not that pretty of a weld. Um, and this is the actual slag hammer I was telling you about. I went in and grabbed it. Uh, and then it's just better for getting in these tight areas and just chipping away that slag, you know, and uh, not uh, shiny weld, you know, to show. So that's uh, that's that. We'll bolt the, uh, bolt the license plate on there. I already went and pre-fit and pre-drilled the holes. You just lay your plate on there and use a scratch hole and you can drill it in with your drill press or a hand drill. Um, and uh, that's, the, that's today's customization to the boat trailer. I might uh, put a, a winch or, or a nose little holder at the front. And eventually she's going to need a jack because I'm just kind of hand bombing it for now. This was just an old utility trailer that I stripped the sides off of. And I suppose I could have uh, brought you guys along for that. But uh, anyways, uh, if you want to see more work on the trailer, I, we got uh, trailer lights to come. And I gotta, I'm going to have to wire that up on here because these ones are all pooched. And I can share that with you, but, uh, and oh yeah, and here's uh, the welder I'm using. Just a little Princess Auto Special Power Fisty Audio. Uh, it's a uh, inverter welder, so you get this tiny little bugger and you get uh, a power of a 110. And as you've seen, does uh, does a job for this light duty trailer. You know, it's not, it's not super crazy strong, but it's good enough to hold a license plate anyways, right? And uh, like I said, uh, this is the main weld that's holding it, the one that's above and underneath. This is just kind of, you know, for peace of mind. Anyways... Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe and share with your friends. And, uh, you know, we'll uh, do some more fun stuff and fix more things and do all this kind of crazy stuff with vintage tools and, and power saws. Anyways, until next time, you guys take her easy. Be safe.